most germans pay with cash instead of using a card in fact more than 60 percent of all transactions in germany are still using cash and a large majority never use a card as payment. As an expat, I never understood why Germans prefer cash over cards. But there is some science behind it. Research has shown that using physical money for transactions can make it harder to let go of your money. And using cash to make payments might be more effective in helping people who struggle with compulsive shopping or digital gambling to regulate their behavior. So if you are someone who is struggling to save money, try using cash instead of using your debit or credit card and see the results for yourself. Hey friends, my name is Asan. I'm a researcher and in this video, I want to share money mistakes every expat makes in Germany. Many of us have a tendency to make impulsive purchases, particularly when we are feeling bored. This is especially true for people who follow deals websites. I used to spend at least five minutes each morning looking for deals on an app called my deals i would also regularly visit the deal section on amazon and ebay to get special discounts although i have bought many discounted items i eventually realized that i was wasting money on useless things for instance if i bought something for 200 euros at 50 percent discount but never used it did i really save those 200 euros so i decided to uninstall all of the discount apps studies have shown that our brain releases dopamine in anticipation of rewards. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that affects our feelings of pleasure. And online shopping can increase dopamine levels because we have to wait for our purchases. However, the amount of dopamine release decreases over time. And once we have received our purchases, the dopamine release becomes negligible. This means that we get the most satisfaction during the anticipation phase. We can actually increase the dopamine release by increasing the this phase. This is also known as delayed gratification, which refers to the ability to resist temptation of an immediate reward in favor of a larger reward that is available in the future. This is a key principle that can help individuals control their impulsive buying behavior. By setting a waiting limit of at least two weeks before making non-essential purchases, one can practice delayed gratification and avoid making impulsive buying decisions that may lead to buyer's remorse. This waiting period allows the individual to assess whether the purchase is truly necessary and whether they have the financial resources to make the purchase without negatively impacting their budget. I started practicing delayed gratification myself by setting a two week waiting period before purchasing non-essential items. For example, when I was editing one of my YouTube videos, I noticed that my computer was not functioning as smoothly as I wanted it to be. And I thought about upgrading it. Instead of making a quick purchase, I took two weeks to research and look for the best components that fit my budget. This waiting period not only allowed me to find the best components, but also helped me optimize my budget based on my needs. In addition to delayed gratification, you can set a budget for your shopping and stick to it. Make a list of what you need and avoid impulse buying. If you really struggle with saving money, you can unsubscribe from marketing emails and newsletters from those stores that tempt you to shop and avoid online shopping sites and malls as much as possible, especially during sales or discount periods. In many of my videos, I have talked about creating a budget. Before we dive further into it, I want you to ask yourself a question. Are you currently following a budget? My guess is that most of you are not. Not knowing where your money is going is probably the biggest money mistake almost every expat in Germany makes. To avoid this, you can create an ironclad budget by following some simple steps. Firstly, determine your monthly income, which is often your salary, and calculate your fixed expenses such as rent, utility, insurance, and any subscription services. Next, determine your variable expenses such as groceries, transportation, entertainment, and travel. Prioritize your expenses and differentiate between the essential and optional expenses. If possible, reduce your non-essential expenses by setting up short-term and long-term financial goals. You can find more detailed information on how to create a budget in this video. I have recently installed an app called Finance Guru to monitor my spending habits. I am tracking my income and expenses with the analysis option. Based on clever trends, I am trying to optimize my spending habits. I am quite analogous with my budget creation, but you can use this app to make a budget as well. I'll put a link in the description if you want to sign up for free. When it comes to food, expats tend to be either really good or really bad at saving money. Many of us enjoy eating out. 
but this can lead to a hefty bank statement at the end of the month. Cooking your meals at home can be both healthier and less expensive. If you're short on time, you can try meal prepping by preparing meals in advance for the week or cooking partially prepared meals that can be finished quickly. This saves you time, stress, calories and sometimes money as well. If you choose to eat out, consider setting a monthly budget for yourself. Stick to your budget and once it's gone, avoid eating out for the rest of the month. Please hit the like button if you're getting value from this video and consider subscribing. Another money mistake expats in Germany do is going for the 0% financing. This can be especially harmful for younger people because it often entices people to spend more money than they can afford. When people see that they can purchase something for 0% interest, they may be more likely to buy something that they normally would not be able to afford. With the recent increase in interest rates, companies offering 0% financing has certainly decreased, but I still see students buying expensive phones with contracts which they cannot actually afford. Even if you try to avoid signing contracts, it's likely that you will have to sign up for several of them while living in Germany, such as with your electricity and internet providers. However, you can save money by comparing contracts with other providers. You may find a better deal elsewhere and can even negotiate a price reduction from your current provider. For example, my internet contract was about to end. I compared my plan with other companies online and found a cheaper option. Instead of changing providers, I negotiated a contract with my current provider that is 10% less than my previous one. You don't have to stay loyal to a specific company, so try to compare your contracts online and find a good deal for yourself. Another large expense for expat is traveling. Obviously, being in Europe has its ease of travel, but instead of planning for your next trip to Paris, you can plan a regional trip and save the difference. Many expats don't even know about the interesting things in the cities they actually live in. For example, one of the most visited sites in Germany is the Cologne Cathedral. But what a lot of visitors to Cologne don't realize is right underneath are ancient Roman ruins from the end of the first century AD. So try to find hidden gems in your city or places nearby instead of visiting places which are usually crowded with tourists. Many Germans actually do this. They plan trips to places which, as an expat, I have never even heard of. Just the other day, a work colleague told me that their trip to Puglia saved them 25% of the cost compared to their trip to Tuscany. One more thing that the Germans do, and trust me, expat lose a lot of money on that, is renting instead of buying. We sometimes buy things that we only need for a short period of time and end up forgetting about them after using them once. For instance, if you plan to take photos on your trip using a DSLR camera but require a telephoto lens instead of a kit lens, consider renting it rather than purchasing it. If you like the photos and wish to continue taking such pictures, you can buy the lens later on. However, often we buy things just to experience the excitement of the anticipation as I mentioned earlier on in the video. Also, if something stops working, instead of ordering a new one, try to get it repaired. If it's not fixable, then you can always replace it, but at least now you have tried and have done your part. The biggest money mistake most expats in Germany make is not filing a tax return. In Germany, you can get back an average of 1000 euros from the government if you file your tax return. And if you have work or study related expenses, you can get even more. For example, you can get back the travel cost and much more if you just submit a tax return. In this video, I share exactly what you can claim in a tax return in Germany. So thanks for watching, Black Gizum, and I'll see you in this video.